Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am creating this cute little welcome baby card um, using Hello Bluebird stamps and dies today. So let's take a look at what I used. To start with, I have the, uh, I'm gonna show you first. <laughs> I have the little star stamp set and then I have the rainbow square die. So I'm using these two to create my card today. So off camera, I went ahead and stamped out my images using Versafine Onyx Black Ink and I embossed them with some clear embossing powder because I am gonna use my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers today. Um, I pulled out two grays for my elephant, but I decided to go with um, 092, which is blue gray. Um, I thought that that was kind of the color that I wanted to go with. I, I was thinking about using light gray as well, um, but I just decided to do one color. Now he is quite large, so I kind of sectioned him off into pieces, if you like, and um, just worked on little pieces at a time. I do find that working with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers or possibly any type of watercolor um, marker that you kind of have to work relatively quickly. You don't want them to kind of dry out on the page. So you don't want to do massive areas, um, just little pieces at a time so that you can um, spread the color around and it doesn't dry out before you've had a chance to do that. I am using the um, blender pen, which is number 999, um, to blend out my colors today. I'm not using an actual water brush. This is the blender pen and I really like using this. Um, I find it easier than using a water pen or water brush, which I've tried before. Um, and I kind of like the way that this works. Um, so I'm just using one color for each image and I'm using um, the blender pen to create the light, light and shade in my image. So I just kind of lay down my pen um, where I want my shadow to be. And then I use my blender pen to pull that color out and into the image. Um, so that it goes lighter and lighter. And I've got a scrap piece of paper. I mean, I always have a scrap piece of cardstock under my coloring anyway. Um, but I'm using that to kind of clean off my brush in between, my blender brush in between, so that I don't drag too much color um, into areas where I want it a bit lighter. And also just to clean off in between each color that I, each color change that I do. So um, once I kind of, was happy with how he was looking. I just went in with the pen, the gray pen directly onto his little toenails. <laughs> I don't know. What do you call those on elephants? I'm not sure. Uh, and his tail and just added the color directly and didn't worry about blending it out. I then moved on to my fox um, and I'm using for him 061 light brown, which is a nice orangey color. Um, the other thing that I've noticed when using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers is it's important to let them kind of dry a little bit. So what you don't want to do is add um, color. So like I wouldn't want to color the bunny in straight away after I'd done the elephant because I kind of want my elephant to dry a little bit or else there's a risk of dragging some of the gray into the bunny. So um, I try and kind of do separate images uh, so that I'm not doing all in one area at once. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I just don't know if I'm getting it out properly. Um, but that's what I do. So I kind of did my elephant first and I moved off to my um, fox over here and I'm going to finish coloring him and then I'll go back and do other areas. Um, so I'm, I'm not doing the same area all the time. Um, so I did actually finish off my fox though and I'm using 071 natural beige just to add a tiny bit of color to the kind of white areas of him, so tail and face. So once I'd done that, I took the same color and I went into my bunny. I felt like I'd left it long enough to um, make sure I wasn't dragging any of that gray. And also because I have um, embossed these lines, um, it's there's a little bit of a, a kind of well, if you like. So the color's not gonna pull out of the, um, out of the lines as easily as if it was just a flat line without embossing. Again, I hope I'm making sense today. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm making things complicated, but hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. I did just switch my lamp on there as well, just to add a little bit more light, so hopefully you can see a little bit better. 
To colour in my clouds, I decided to do them in a kind of pale pink shade. So I'm using exactly that colour, 028 Pale Pink. And I'm just using my um, pen to kind of add some colour around the edges and then kind of using my blender pen and kind of scrubbing that colour around a little bit um, just to blend it out into, into nothing so that it blends out straight into the white. And I just liked the really soft look that this gave. Um, and it worked out quite nicely. And again, because it's quite big, I'm just doing little sections at a time rather than um, working on the whole image all at once. So I'm going to turn my paper around because I don't want my fingers to smudge into um, the parts that I've just coloured. I have done that before. As I said, it stays wet a little bit for, for just a little while, not for a long, long time. So you have to be a little bit careful not to kind of um, drag the colour around where you don't want it. And so I have learned my lesson the hard way with that. <laughs> so I'm being a little bit careful. So once that was done, I moved on and I chose um, to use a, it's quite a bright yellow for my moon. Um, but again, I'm not laying in too much colour and I'm going to blend it out. So this is 050 yellow and it does come out quite bright. But I've only just laid a tiny bit, well, I say a tiny bit, a little bit down at the bottom of the moon. And then I'm going to use my blender pen to drag that colour all the way up to the top and colour in right to the top so that I don't add any more. And I kind of end up with a little bit of, um, it's kind of darker at the bottom and slightly lighter at the top. I'm going to use that same colour in my stars. I'm just adding a little dab into the stars and then I'm going to blend that out with my blender pen. And then I will move on to my little bird. So I'm using a turquoise colour for this. So 042 turquoise green. And again, I didn't want him to be really bright because this is quite a, a bright, bold colour. So just adding a tiny bit and then blending out with my blender pen. I use that same colour on the bucket, which holds the stars. So again, just being careful not to add too much. And I'm also using that on the net that my little fox is holding. Um, I didn't want to introduce too many new colours. I just wanted to keep the colour palette fairly simple. So that's why I wanted to um, kind of use this colour throughout and also to make sure that it wasn't just in one spot um, so that that colour was kind of spread around throughout my card. And then just adding a little bit of that same yellow to the stars in the bucket. And that is it, colouring, oh, sorry, it's not. <laughs> I'm using 026 light pink on their cheeks. I completely forgot about that part. Um, and again, this is quite a bright pink. I probably could have used that pale pink, um, but what I'm doing is I'm just taking my blender pen and really working that out and then scribbling off to the side so that I don't carry too much colour across, just making sure that I tone it down a bit so it's not quite so stark. Um, and I did do the little bird at the top there, which you probably can't see very well. <laughs> um, and that's it, colouring done. And I can use the coordinating dies because I have those to cut those out. Next up, I took a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock, which is four and three quarters by four and three quarters. And I'm using my Distress Oxide inks to add some colour to this. So the colours I'm using are Dusty Concord, Chipped Sapphire and Black Set. And I want to create a kind of night sky. So I've gone in with that dusty concord all around the middle. Now I'm not being overly um, careful about this or um, I, I guess I, I'm not too worried about it looking a little bit patchy because I want it to have some texture. Um, I don't want it completely smooth. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, I'm adding quite a bit of this chip sapphire around the edges and also directly over top of that, um, that dusty concord to kind of tone it down a little bit. I don't want it quite so bright. And um, I just wanted to add this kind of layer over top, but you still get that um, dusty concord peeking through the back. So it's still there. It's just not quite so in your face, <laughs> if that makes sense. And then I'm going back in with um, my black soot or going in with my black soot. And I'm just doing that all the way around the edges. Um, and then I'll go back and forth and blend everything out again a few times just to make sure that it, it looks kind of um, the way I want it to look. As I say, it's not perfectly even. It's 
got some texture to it, but I like the way that looks. I think it looks kind of more natural um, and more like a, a, a night sky would. <laughs> a kind of, it's kind of a galaxy background, I suppose. Um, and I just like the way that turned out. So I was really happy with that. Next up, I'm getting to do some splattering with my watercolor paints. So this is a metallic white. It's got a little bit of a shine to it. Um, not too much, but just a little bit. And I'm getting quite splat happy with that and just uh, kind of popping that all over. And now I'm taking some um, white, just plain white and doing the same thing. So the, the white is a lot more noticeable and visible, but the um, metallic white just adds a bit of shine. Hopefully you can see that there. So off camera, I went ahead and stamped my sentiment. This is actually from the Sweet Dreams stamp set. And I just, um, I wanted to use the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star sentiment um, from the little star sentiment, but it, it was too big. So I went for this one and I've white heat embossed that on my background and I then have cut the frame um, from that rainbow square die set um, out of just some lawn fawn white, uh, uh, it's 80 pound actually cardstock. And I'm attaching that with some foam tape all around. So the foam tape's all around the edge of the frame and I'm just gonna lay out my images where I want them. So I'm going to attach some of these directly to the background and then other pieces I'm going to um, pop up on some foam tape. So the moon, I want to sit behind these little sleeping critters and it's just gonna sit right on the background there. Um, and I've used some heavy doodle foam strips for this um, and they're nice and um, they're quite high. So um, they give a lot of dimension and I really like that. So I've just bought my little fox in there. Again, he's gonna be popped up on some foam tape, but I just wanted to kind of play around with placement of everything else. So I'm gonna glue the little bird directly onto the larger cloud with the elephant and bunny. And he's just gonna sit on the edge there. And I'm gonna glue the little bucket of stars next to my fox on his little cloud. Um, and it's got a little line, so it looks like it's kind of tucked into the cloud, which I really liked as well. And I should say that the die that cut out the cloud the fox is sitting on, it actually cuts the um, the kind of cloud line in the center so that the fox can kind of tuck into the cloud. I didn't show that, but it, um, that's a really nice little detail. So now I'm just deciding where my stars are gonna go. I've got five, well, three single stars and then um, two in a pair. And I'm just kind of playing around with placement of those and deciding where I'm gonna put them. And once I'm happy, I'm going to bring out my kind of little sticky pencil thing <laughs> um, and just pop some dots of glue down. I'm using my Lawn Fawn liquid glue for this. So just popping some dots of glue underneath so I can pop them down on top. And once I'm happy with all of that, it's time to add some um, foam to my larger images and get them stuck down. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I, I was saying in, the, in my haul video, in the video where I um, kind of showed all my Hello Bluebird haul, that I don't often make new baby cards and it's something that I needed to work on a little bit um, and make sure that I had a few in my stash. So I'm really happy to have made this one. And these images made it so much fun. They're so, so sweet and cute. And I think it turned out really nicely. And um, I know that a lot of mums, a lot of new mums and dads as well, probably, uh, like to keep the cards that they get for new baby. Um, and I would like to think that this one would stand the test of time and would be something that they could um, show to their son or daughter once they were growing up and say, hey, look, this is one of the cards we got on, on your birth. And I think it would look really, really sweet. And I know that as a new mum, had I received this, I would have been very happy. So <laughs> I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. Um, and as I say, it really is down to the images. They're really, really adorable. And I don't think you could do much wrong when creating with these. I'm so sorry, as I'm recording this, my son is running in and out of the house <laughs> and I have to keep stopping and restarting. I don't know what it is lately. I'm having real trouble finding quiet time to do my voiceovers. Um, but anyway, as I said, I'm just propping these two um, larger images up with some foam tape so that it's got a little bit of dimension. And I've got them hanging over the edge of the, um, 
the frame so that they're kind of looking like this scene kind of extends out of it as well. Um, and I just liked the way that this looked. And as I say, the stamps are absolutely gorgeous. I'm very, very happy with them. I thought they lent themselves really well to the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, that kind of watercolor look. It's quite soft and um, yeah, I really liked how this turned out. I think I'm getting better with my Zigs. <laughs> I was a bit nervous to use them for a while, but I think I'm getting more used to them. So off camera, I went ahead and cut a um, square card base. This is five and a half by five and a half. And then I took a white panel from the same Lawn Fawn 80 pound white card stock and I stamped my sentiment out. This one does come from the little star stamp set along with the little bear from the little, little star stamp set. Oh, that's a bit of a mouthful. And I'm just attaching that inside with some liquid glue. Um, and I did manage to get glue everywhere, <laughs> I don't know why, um, but it was okay. I took my little um, adhesive eraser and I got all of that up and just kind of cleaned it up with the edge of my little pokey tool there. Um, so I'm just going to rub that off with my ad adhesive eraser, which works a treat actually for cleaning up things like this. Um, so it's a very handy little thing to have. So... Once that was all sorted and everything was fine, I then attached my card panel to my card base and that was it, job done. Um, and as I say, very happy with how this turned out. I think it's really lovely um, and yeah, really enjoyed making it. Had a lot of fun coloring my images with my zigs today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up please do leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about it. And please do subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you come back again. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care. Bye.